California has been in a 20 year downward spiral. Everybody seems to acknowledge that there's a problem, but nothing seems to get done. Environmental litigation is big business. Hopefully, you know, Governor Brown will put his gloves on and, and fight for small businesses here, but everybody's got to do their part. High unemployment, strict regulations, and fierce competition from other states. Welcome to California 2012. Tonight in this Fox 11 News special, Saving the California Dream, we'll discuss where we've gone wrong, what we can improve, and how some innovators are bucking the outsourcing trend and bringing jobs back to our state. Our series producer, Heidi Kuda, joins us now. Heidi's been working on these issues uh, for months. Heidi? Yeah, the good news is our politicians are paying attention to our Saving the California Dream series which puts a harsh spotlight on the exodus of business to other states. Governor Brown's been watching. Check it out. Yes, some people are moving to Texas, and they've been doing that for a long time. Texas specializes in uh, minimum wage jobs. Uh, we are more focused on the higher wage jobs. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's interesting. He, he made that point. Right. And he, he's, he focuses on that, what he calls a high. But look, it doesn't cost as much to live in in uh, Texas, so yeah. when you do, you have to do comparative analysis where right. you need the cost of living as, a, as opposed to oh, wages absolutely. as well. Oh, absolutely, and we need it, and it's funny because uh, that's a direct hit on us because he, they've been watching this series, and I think that's a wonderful <laughs> thing. Absolutely, yep. But they're growing their companies in Texas. Uh, you know, companies that start here right. and go there for the benefits. Right. And Governor Rick Perry has basically opened the checkbook there and given them a chance. He has, and I'll tell you what, he returns my phone calls pretty fast, just like he does the businessmen there. So. Carl's Jr. CEO Andy Puzder and LegalZoom CEO John Suh, who began the series with me, give us the lowdown on why they're growing their California-based companies in Texas. Texas politicians at the local, city, and state level are taking square aim at California businesses, encouraging them to relocate or set up new operations in Texas. And they're winning. Recorded by the governor's office, the, the mayor of Austin, the president of city council, um, even the governor's wife was inviting us out to brunch. And they gave us um, over a million dollars in incentives to set up operations in Austin. And we did. And within 12 months, we had 150 new jobs there. In Texas, from the time you apply for your permits to build to the time you can start construction, the average time is about six weeks. In uh, California, it's about eight months. <laughs> It's hard to run a business here, it's hard to open a business here, and then your employees have to pay a tax. The difference in Texas is you can open them, and then when you run it, your employees, they don't get taxed. There's no state income tax. We don't want to leave. We want to see California recover. Texas has a strategy of encouraging and enticing business to locate operations, and it's very, very effective. It's a dogfight, and I'd hope that the city and state get together on one page. It's it's a real Donnybrook, a nice dog fight. We spoke with Governor Perry's office, and they say, contrary to Governor Brown's statement, 95% of Texas jobs are above minimum wage. They also say Perry's created an, uh, an economic climate where employers can risk capital, grow their businesses with low taxes, a regulatory the climate that's reasonable, and a state budget that is balanced with billions in their rainy day fund. The message is clear, Texas is wide open for business, and that's basically it. And I counted about 47 companies that actually moved uh, since 2010 or are growing their businesses from California to Texas. And Why so, don't you think the California government body isn't getting the message? You know what? There's a lot of reasons. We can't blame one person, but yeah. we can learn. We can learn. Let's learn. These CEOs tell us from the state, local, every single level, they are so streamlined. And obviously, they're willing to, like you said, open their pocketbooks and pay for a business to come to town. We're just trying to, you know extract that cash, they're actually giving them the cash and well, saying come. The California uh, government, as I'm going to just call them all government, whether it's local, state, right. uh, uh, officials, may not be returning your calls, but they're watching and they're paying attention. <laughs> Beautiful. And, and we are getting calls from, uh, from some out of state uh, oh, uh, people yes. who are interested in, in what you're doing and getting into the competition. So it may not just be Texas and California, maybe oh, yeah. California and New Mexico, who knows where else. Absolutely. But Silicon Valley is still uh, one of the places for innovation. It's known for innovators. But one tech whiz who founded a company called FaceCash is suing the state over one of those regulations. Think Computer and FaceCash founder Aaron Greenspan explains why the Money Transmission Act puts innovators like him 
out of business. Face Cash is a mobile payment system, and the idea is that you can use your phone instead of a plastic card to actually pay for things at the point of sale. And the reason why it's advantageous is because, first of all, it's a lot cheaper for the merchants who have to pay the swipe fees to typically credit card companies or banks. So initially, we didn't even hear about this new law, which is called the California Money Transmission Act, because uh, nobody told us about it. Basically, what it did is regulate uh, money transmission in California between different states in the United States for the first time. This really changed everything because that meant any kind of payment domestically now had to go through this licensure process. And it turned out that that process is extremely expensive. It was a huge problem for us because it meant that we had to basically stop everything after investing over a million dollars in this business. So what the state could have done differently is they could have put more thought into the regulation before it became law. We would just like to see uh, the law declared unconstitutional. I think that would open up the market for new technologies to compete with the banks and the credit card companies. And uh, I think that would generally be a good thing given where the banks have got us so far. Right. Governor Brown's office says it can't comment directly on the lawsuit, but it did confirm some of the facts of the law, namely that the Money Transmission Act, this new law, does require a company to have a net worth of about a million dollars minimum to transfer money, and it could take up to a year to get a license. So, you know. All right. So this, in this case, I would side somewhat with the government because the regulation was there. They should have done a little more due diligence to figure out this law. But it kind of snuck up on them once the money started flowing, and then, of course, the state steps in. Right. But, you know, regulations are what they are, and they're always built and designed to collect money. His whole point is that this was lobbied heavily by big money. It just came into effect in January. He's been working on this innovation for 12 years, finally got it to the table. Subway, all these retail chains had actually, you know, bought on. <laughs> surprise, all of a sudden, yeah. you got to show you have this net worth, and that's a kid to watch. He's not going to take it lying down. So. No, and innovation, of course, is the key to California's Silicon recovery. Valley, yeah, come yeah, that's on. that's where it all comes from. That's right. Well, where are we going to go next? To the land of environmental lawsuits where farmers tell us they're the endangered species, but no, there's no shortage of lawyers. Really? Environmental litigation is big business. This is not a matter of protecting cute and fuzzy creatures. What we're doing now are putting real families out of business and jeopardizing America's energy supply and its food source. 